Back for Blood is an upcoming first-person zombie horde survival co-op shooter developed by Turtle Rock Studios and published by Warner Brother Games. Now, Turtle Rock Studios rose to prominence in the Xbox and Xbox 360 with ports of Counter-Strike and Left 4 Dead, which is another first-person zombie horde survival shooter. Now, the similarities don't end there. Recently, I was invited to play the Back for Blood closed alpha after applying whilst it was being teased on the Game Awards 2020. Now, I sat and played the alpha here with my little brother who's clocked in more hours in Left 4 Dead on console than I've clocked in an entire Assassin's Creed franchise to date. So I want to tell you three things. What the game is, where the game looks like it's going, and where I'd actually like the game to go. As such, let's start with the first point. What is Back for Blood? Huge shout out to the guys over at startmenu.co.uk. They're allowing me to post the text review of this over on their site so you'll be able to read that there, link in the description and has been on screen since. So like I stated in the intro, Back for Blood is an upcoming first person zombie horde survival co-op shooter game developed by Turtle Rock Studios and published by Warner Brother Games, but there's a little more to it. Turtle Rock have stated that this game is not Left 4 Dead 3, but it sure as hell feels like it and to everyone I spoke to whilst I was playing multiplayer, they all said the same. The similarities do start right at the beginning. They're all still connecting. Right? <clears throat> This is a decent team. Makes a fucking change. <laughs> All right. You and three others are locked in a safe room, and once you open the door, you make your way through hordes of zombies to another safe room. You're going to fight special zombies, you're going to fight them all in cramped corridors and open spaces, and you need to avoid alerting the horde as much as possible. Now, if you take away all notion of Back for Blood, and guess what I just described, you're going to say Left for Dead. Now, I suppose with the flop that was evolved, Turtle Rock Studio did kind of go back to what they knew, and the thing is, that has worked. Granted, there's a few little tweaks in this recipe, such as being able to buy gun upgrades and buy the healing items, as well as finding booster cards. Booster cards, I hear you say. We me one three are booster cards. Now, these do make a huge difference to the gameplay. They're kind of like buffs or perks. You build a deck, uh, you do also get a sort of default deck, but you can build your own, and at the very beginning, you get to pick three cards from three random rolls. And resourcefulness, so I'll get infinite pistol bullets. What do you think? Team Stamina or Team Health? I went with Team Health. I'll take Team Stamina then. So it gives you a set of cards, you pick a card, it re-rolls for new cards, you pick another card, you re-roll, you get some new cards. At the beginning of every act or level within a chapter, Mm. You get to pick another one. Each of these will give you some special abilities and you can be the real MVP or an absolute fucking brainlet who thinks that this co-op first person shooter needs to be speedrun. What kind of fucking game mode did this guy choose? What do you mean? That's the lonely fucking speedrun here. But are people just speedrunning for the sake of it or something? Probably. Has he done any speedrun in this? He yeah, speedrun Left 4 Dead, that's all. Right, that's different. Left 4 Dead's how old? We think our co-op's different because co-op isn't about just putting four people into a mission together. Co-op's about identifying tasks an activity and gameplay that depend on people working together. If they're not working together, it's not true co-op. Fucking idiots. Now you can also pick these up in game as well, as you're running around you can find them. Sometimes they cost a little, sometimes they're free and it's just something like 25% faster reloads for example. Now perks such as Caretaker will allow you to heal a friendly and receive the same amount of healing back. Blood Donor heals the team for 45 hit points over 10 seconds when a person gets downed or killed. Martyr will give the team 100% extra damage, infinite ammo, 50% more stamina and 25 revive speed for 10 seconds when someone goes down. All of these booster cards, they seem to help everyone. 5% stamina for you and no one else really doesn't help the team. Overall, I like these changes. It gives the game a bit more of a meta game that starts in the lobby. If you can get a team of friends with some microphones and you all sit in Discord and build up a complimentary deck with each other, and you trust each other not to throw the game, you're gonna win. I can only hope that this deck building doesn't become some stupid fucking loot box mechanic like an Injustice 2 or Mortal Kombat. And if it does, it better no fucking use real world money, I swear to god. In my eyes, Warner Brothers Studios don't have the best track record. Good day, bastards. So where does the game look to be going? Well, if it wasn't obvious from the past few paragraphs there, the game looks to be down the route of a modified Left 4 Dead. Clearly, enough changes have been made on its own to make it a separate product, else we'd be hearing an awful lot about the words cease and desist and letters from Valve being sent, Valve being the owners of the Left 4 Dead IP. Now, obviously the game does draw some inspiration from Left 4 Dead, but that's just inherently a good thing, it's not bad in any way. It seems to be the Vox Populi, especially when Valve have issues with the number 3. 
So why not give the masses the game that is very similar but with a few little gameplay tweaks on it and a better looking engine? Practically the same thing in my eyes. The Source engine is old enough that in the UK it can go out and legally get married and join the army. Meanwhile, Unreal Engine 4, it's still in primary school, ain't you little guy? Though I wasn't exactly the biggest fan of Left 4 Dead or any of its sequels, I do thoroughly enjoy Back 4 Blood. There's less cringeworthy banter between the playable characters, or cleaners as they're called, and I enjoy that. UK humour is genuinely quite cringe comedy, but I don't like cringe because it's cringe. Go figure. With all that said though, very little banter means you can actually focus more on the sort of overall story that's going on and killing the Ridden. The Ridden is the canonical name for the zombies, but let's be fair, we're just going to call them zombies, ain't we guys? Same way, we're going to call them boomers and witches and tanks. So where would I like the game to go? Honestly, believe it or not, I'm actually loving this trajectory that's been plotted by Turtle Rock Studios. If all we need is a few more levels and the other four cleaners, then so be it. Keep everything else as it is. Granted, do work on that difficulty. It took me six hours to complete the alpha, fully, on easy. <laughs> this is normal. This cannot be normal. No, even normal classic. No, there's no way this was classic. Oh, 100% this is classic, mate. I set it that way. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. They are focusing an awful lot on replayability. But what happens when you crank it up to medium? Well, you soon realise it's not a fucking gradient, but it's a set of stairs and it just plateaus at that difficulty when you die. The worst part is, when you do die, you lose half your health. So you become less prone to taking fights. So then you become a liability. And then when you actually do die, because it's like Left 4 Dead where you, you know, end up being trapped in something or in a closet. Three people need to take on a ton of zombies and it does just become really hard. Right, ready? This has got to be one difficulty up, so let's see why not. <coughs> There's three difficulties, this is the medium difficulty. The game director is a good feature sometimes. It is implemented to make every experience a little bit different, but they're all the same. It's really hard to notice when you have these preordained scripted events. At some point, it just feels like the RNG tables are shafting you. In level 2, you get an ogre and it chases you into the tunnels. It meets you at the end of the tunnels and then that's fine. At the beginning of level 3, there's an ogre straight as you open the door. In 9 out of my 10 playthroughs, there was only one time there was no ogre in level 3. We bought an awful lot of grenades for nothing. So yeah, dial it back a little in terms of that difficulty. <laughs> and uh, remove scripted events because if you're going to have some scripted events like that, have a pool of scripted events. Make it that the RNG there is more than this one thing. The ogre is a huge behemoth, but it can be beaten. When you have an immovable object like that and you beat it, it loses all sense of threat because you know how to beat it. It would hinder further playthroughs if it wasn't random, if you will. Maybe have an ogre, then, I don't know, a huge horde that you just have to fight through multiple sirens which are essentially like the witches that can alert the horde. Things like that so you're not just fighting the ogre. I get that it's an alpha, this is just an idea. The alpha game will not be reflective of the overall finished product, I am aware of that. However, like I said, this is just an idea. So if you haven't harkened on about an awful lot of things that are similar, let's try something that's uh, completely different. The differences. Obviously the boosters are one thing, and in each safe room you can also trade copper, which is the currency for things like ammo, offensive ordnance, healing items, utility and weapon upgrades. As an example, have you ever seen a 357 Magnum revolver with a Trijicon ACOG scope? I don't even think you can do that in Escape from Tarkov. Now, unlike Left 4 Dead, we actually know what causes the outbreak of zombies or ridden in this game. From the cinematic that was shown at the Game Awards 2020, it seems that a group of scientists found a worm during an Arctic expedition. This thing is what causes the outbreak. It's actually very similar to a DC Black Label comic by Joe Hill called The Plunge. Except the Ridden aren't sentient alien worms who need a human host body to communicate. Apart from these changes, uh, there's just a few little minute ones such as, you know, more than four playable characters, four arced inside a level, more guns, some streamlined control, so long gone are the days that LT or right click was to melee. In conclusion though, I have enjoyed my time with this alpha more than I enjoyed 
most of my time with most betas that I've played to be honest. I feel the reason for that though is because this feels more like a vertical slice over a full blown alpha build. To be fair though, the team have done two very similar games in the past so this is a project must be that little bit easier. Now I will be buying this game myself on launch, Back for Blood will be available for release on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X and PC via Steam and the Epic Game Store. It is slated for release for a June 22nd, 2021 release day and the developers have said that if you missed your chance to play in this alpha, there may be future alphas and betas coming up, so keep a little eye out there. I myself will be doing a full-blown review whenever I can. I'll also update everything as it comes through as well, so if I get into another beta, I'll be able to tell you what the difference has been and such. Until then, guys, thanks for watching.